Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I had a couple brethren ask me about how the chickens are doing and how the garden's doing. So I thought I'd do a quick walk, like kind of like a walk and talk, and uh, we'll explain some of the great things that the Lord has blessed me with and um, and go through some of the property that some of the work I do on a day-to-day -day basis and let you guys know how the chickens are doing. Got some surprises. So I'll uh, go ahead and switch the camera around so we can see as we're walking. Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, first thing that I take care of is Victoria, and she's doing good. Um, she's getting a little bit harder to see, maybe it could be cataracts because she's getting old, and um, had a lot of her teeth removed, and uh, one of the things she has a hard time with is walking up and down these steps, so I could really use prayer for her because she's a blessing. Um, ooh, that breeze. Still got an icy cold breeze for July. It's been a weird summer. But here's one of the ponds the Lord allowed me to do. And I don't know if we can get some of the fish to come up. But I have some fish in there that I take care of. The Lord blesses me with. Oh, there's some of them right there. Really good fish. Uh, koi fish. But uh, I have one koi fish in here. But a lot of them are the cheap, cheap uh goldfish that you buy to feed to the your turtles and stuff like that in aquariums and they actually got pretty big <laughs> and they're going good i've got some um i don't know if they're going to show up on here but some mosquito fish that'll eat the mos uh, mosquito lava that they try to lay in here so every day i gotta check this out make sure to clean it out check the level of the water and uh twice a week i feed this pond and i have another one that's an in-ground pond in the backyard the Lord bless me with this. So let's keep walking. Every day I come out here and check this, and I've got to shake it up because this is what I'm doing with the chicken feed. Gotta fill it some more water. It's called form fermenting. That's why you can see all the bubbles. Because it's fermenting. Uh, and it's healthier for the chickens. There's my bumper sticker. Um, over here, a new addition. Okay, we'll be over there in just a second. Our, uh, my addition to the property is I planted two um, apple trees. And I bought some cages to go around it because if you look at them, they're kind of skinny. That's because the deer got to them. <laughs> We've got deer in the pro neighborhood. But I will get a few apples off of them this year, which is pretty neat. I thank the Lord for it. And there's my lemon bush that I planted a few years ago. And it's thriving, and I'm still getting lemons all the time. Just all the year round, you'll get some lemons off of it. And it's such a blessing. And this is my rosemary tree that I'm going to have to trim back. But when you smell this, like you break it and smell it, it just smells amazing, and you cook with it. So the Lord's blessed me with that. And I, like I said, I'm doing this video to encourage the brethren to try to do the same. If you got some property, whether it's in town or out, outside of town, plant some uh, fruit trees. There's, uh, We'll get to the fruit trees in the backyard. Once again, I put that there, brothers and sisters of Christ, because the rooster can't see the top of the bar so he doesn't jump up and jump out. <laughs> but, but back to the trees. There's a lot of small fruit trees you can buy and put them in your yard and grow some fruit. And have fruit every year. So, this little guy right here, he's a rooster, but I only need one rooster. There's my main rooster right there. So, this next week, we're gonna, I'm gonna be butchering a few of these and eating them. But uh, we've got a lot of new additions that have grown up. I just got finished doing six uh, hens and one rooster that were babies. And they grew up, and they're all getting big enough to start laying eggs. So I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> they're walking away. But they, they, they really make a mess of this yard. I had to build that wall and re reinforce the fence so that the baby chicks, when I start doing baby chicks again, I want to be able to let them roam out here instead of keeping them locked up in a little box or something. But the blessing, I told you there'd be a surprise, and it's coming up. You tell them. But they always follow me now because they're looking for treats. <laughs> but um, 
I got the bucket of food here. I was able to build in a uh, automatic waterer there. I, showed, I think I showed it to you guys last time, but I'll do it again. But I had to brace it with some steel and then made them a roosting spot there. The hanging food. But here's the blessing. I'm always having to incubate the chickens myself, but instead, one of the roosters set on three eggs. Not rooster, I'm sorry, hen set on three eggs, and she hatched three eggs. So now I didn't have to do anything. She's taking care of them. I have to keep them down there separate from the big chicks, the chickens until they get a little bit bigger. I don't know if you can see, but back in there, I don't think you can see. Oh well, yeah, there it is. There, there's her head a little bit. I've got another rooster trying to set, and she keeps doing this. She keeps putting junk all in the water. I'm trying to keep the water clean. Sorry about that. But it's just Christ, but no, I got baby chicks that she's taking care of. I don't have to do anything. Usually I incubate about nine of them a year. And try to get as many uh, egg laying hens, and then I have to eat the roosters. And then hens that. You tell them. Hens that aren't laying eggs. If they don't lay eggs for a long time, like they go a year or two without laying eggs, they become food. Usually it's less than that. If they go a year without, or six months without laying a single egg, they become food. But. I was able to add that addition where now I have a lower bin that if there's chick baby chickens with eggs that they want to set on, I can move them to the lower bin and then they can take care of their baby chickens. And then you have the top bin where they roost and take and lay their eggs. Oops, I didn't lower this. And look what we got here. I don't know if you can see it yet. There we go. There's two eggs for me to take in. Got a small one and a huge one. So, that is a blessing. So far the hens have been a blessing. Every day I gotta come out here and check on them at least two or three times a day. So it's something that you do that will keep you busy. Boy, is he upset, he's, he's wanting something. Um, this is my peach tree. I planted it last year, I, didn't, I, had, I had it trimmed pretty good so I didn't get anything off of it last year. But this year there's tons of peaches on it. Let's see if I can get in here. There's a peach right there, but there's tons of these peaches on here. Remember that analogy I made, brothers and sisters in Christ, about the pe uh, the fruit trees. You know, you get a lot of fruit at first. You get a few fruit at first, then a lot of fruit during the harvest, which is yet to come. And then when we get around uh, September, October, you might find one or two pieces of fruit left, and that's it. It's the gleanings. But I am getting squash big time. There's some in here I got to pull, and I'm trying to dehydrate a lot of these because I haven't gotten into the jarring yet. But I wish I'm going to dehydrate a lot of these and make like soup mixes. But what I, is a big blessing from the Lord is, is He allowed me to start grapes this year. So I've got one grape start there, one grape start there, one grape start there, and one in the far corner. So I got four of them. I hope they come up on this fence and they can take over the whole fence going that way. They can take over the whole fence going that way as far as they want. And go all around okay my lettuce is at its end <laughs> when you see the lettuce get this tall and starts to branch out it's going to start flowering here we go it's going to start flowering when it starts flowering like this at the end you know it's reached the end of its life and it needs to flower it'll get you seeds if you let it flower and then you have to put a cone of paper around the top like this when it flowers and then when the flower seed uh, turns to seeds and starts seeding, it'll drop into that cone and you can collect all the seeds and then replant them for next year. You constantly are taking care of everything yourself. You're not having to buy anything. Okay. But, uh, and here's all the onions. They're laying flat, but the onions are getting ready to be pulled. So I'm gonna have to pull all these onions. I've got red and yellow onions galore. Um, I completely forgot, my brain keeps forgetting. Um, there's a mix between onions and garlic, and that's what these are. My brain just froze again. Maybe I'll remember. I want to say pallets, something like that. I'm getting, 
but my brain freezes. But they're gonna turn yellow like this when they're ready, so I'm letting the ground dry out. So when it's dried out, I can pull them up. This is my uh, celery. Celery is going amazing. It's big and bushy right now, so. But I outlined it with leftover. Someone gave me tons of onions, so leftover onions. But one thing I left out over here, I got my peach tree there, my plum tree here. The plum tree is very healthy. It started to grow a little bit of flowers, but then we had a cold front that just caused all the flowers on it to drop. And so I didn't get, so I didn't get any plums this year, zero plums. But I put, uh, because of water shortage and you want the ground to stay moisture, I put uh, strawberries underneath and it's so easy to keep them watered. And I put strawberries underneath that guy, uh, my uh, peach tree. And I've gotten a lot of strawberries on both of them this year. In fact, I'm still getting a few. We're already kind of past the strawberries. This is my ground pond. Got some big fish in there. The Lord blessed me with that. I wanted to have a little seat to take a break when doing garden work. And a, I wanted a pond. And the pond looks great. And you get to look out over the hillside, even from the backyard. But... There's still some uh, strawberries throughout here, if I can get to them before the animals do. There's a lot of them right there, green ones that still haven't grown up, but trying to get to some of these before the, the uh, animals do is not as easy. My potatoes this year didn't do so good. They're starting to go good, so they might still make it by the end of August. I might have tons of tomatoes, uh, not tomatoes, potatoes, if I can say it right, potatoes. This was a Jewish type of potato, type of herb, and I forgot the name of it, please forgive me, but these things just went crazy, and they're growing really good, so I'm excited when I try to dig that up to find out what all is in there, because you take the, they, they act like potatoes, so you do the same thing, all the little tiny ones, that's just really tiny, you save for next year, and you replant them, and you don't pay a dime, same thing with the potatoes. You take the small little circle potatoes with roots and you put them to the side in a dry, moist, not a, not a moist area, but a dry area. And you let it set all winter and then you replant them the next year. So these are two that you can constantly do without having to pay for it. Strawberries come back every year. You don't have to keep buying strawberries. This is another potatoes. Two of these I was trying to do potatoes. Like I said, my potatoes aren't doing so hot this year. These are lower you look in there they're lower it's because as they fill up and they go top here then you fill it in with some more manure and get them to really go above here so I can add manure so it can start rooting out and growing more potatoes at a different level it's just we've had I've had a hard time because we had a cold front and then warm then cold front and then warm and it's just been a weird weird uh, summer it really has look at those onions really good big ones this one's a little small, but that one's pretty big. These I didn't eat in time. Everybody knows what these are, hopefully. You've got cauliflower and broccoli. And the broccoli's going to seed, and I want it to, because I only bought one of each this year. So if this goes to seed, I can try to catch the seeds again, and then I can plant tons next year. I'm not a big fan of these, but I tried growing them, and boy, did they grow. <laughs> okay, you got turnips. These turnips are amazing. And then I've got some radishes in here. I'm trying to let them go flower because here they are, they're flowering. And I'm going to try to collect some of the seeds. But they're really good. I've had turnips, steam some turnips, uh, let them put them in soups and let them, like where you heat the soup up, and, soup up and you let the soup go for hours and hours, it'll soften up the turnip. The reason people don't like turnips that much is they're really hard. You know, it's not like biting into a carrot. It's a little bit harder than a carrot. But you just got to take time to cook it right. My broccoli, all the baby seeds are coming up. But broccoli takes year, a few years to get like this. The main stuff in the center, the big stuff you see in the center right there. That I planted that, gosh, what was it, three years ago? And I'm still only getting like five or six. But then I planted all these extra seeds down in there. And boy, they're growing. We looked at the squash on the other side. Here's zucchini. I already plucked a lot of zucchini. Oh, there's a big zucchini right there. I gotta pluck him out. I don't know if he's coming out all right. But... Oh, another big one in the sun. Big zucchini. I gotta pull both of those when I go to do the dehydrating, which will be today or tomorrow. This is my herbs. 
and I completely forgot what these are called. <laughs> the stems are down there somewhere. But uh, I mainly bought this herb and this herb because when you get this leaves like this, you can dry out the leaves and you use them for tea. You can add them to tea, like different teas that you have, or you can do them by themselves and they make great teas. Both of these herbs do. And then I've got my tomatoes here. Trying to grow the tomatoes in three of these pots. One, this fell out because some animal dug it out when it was small and I had to put it back in. So that's why that one's smaller than these other two. And just trying to keep them watered and everything. So I've been working in the garden, praise the Lord, to try to stay busy. And he's blessed this garden. He's really, really blessed the garden. So the chickens are doing great. Thank you for your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, another new addition, I don't know, was in here last time I talked. Uh, a neighbor got rid of a lot of his uh, little bird houses. And uh, so I put a few around. One's behind the tree there a little bit. So let's see if we can get some birds, you know, nesting and everything. The type of birds that go in there, they feed off of the um, mosquitoes and everything. They don't feed off the garden. So some people will say, like, why do you do bird houses right over your garden? These birds that'll nest here are the kind that go after the insects and the bugs. They don't actually go after what I'm growing. So it's good to try to motivate them to want to come in here. Uh, the biggest thing that's going after my strawberries is rats and mice, and I have to keep trapping them. So I figured we'll do one more walkthrough with the chicken. But before I do, let's go ahead and get, ooh, there it is. Get our two eggs. Praise the Lord. Such a blessing. Get these in our pocket. Like I said, I'll show you guys what I'll do. You know what we'll do real quick? I'll show you. When some of this lettuce gets to the point where it's really tough, and because uh, this stuff you can still eat, but it's not as good. But you, I'm not picky. I'll still eat it and I'll still make salads out of it. But when it starts getting bad, I'll start pulling it. And I'll plant some more before August starts. So what you do is you take one, pull it out. Get all the good dirt off of it to save as much dirt as possible. And then we come back here. The chickens, that was all big setup that I got set up, which was amazing. So I can have water back here. All the water spigots are like, clear on the other side of the house so I had to carry buckets of water back here when I first started the garden but was able to serve some things but these guys they like greens the thing about food is when you're cutting up food and you've got extra greens and leftover stuff you don't throw it away or throw it down the garbage disposal you save everything when you have chickens there's a pecking order so they'll fight a little bit but They love their greens. So what we're gonna do is lay that down. Oops. Let them go after it. Usually I sit here and feed them by hand, because it's fun. It's like a petting zoo. But I gotta remember now I got chickens in here. So what we do here is I'm sorry. Throw them in there and let the chickens go crazy over it. But she's got their food, the chick food, and, and water. So, they're doing good. I always have to check that every morning and every afternoon because she'll start kicking dirt up into the water and then they'll be without any water in there. So, and then sometimes you get certain chickens that are pecking order where they won't let anybody else around. So, we'll throw that there. And then they gotta try to share it, share it. But I wanted to share this with the brethren that the chickens are a blessing from the Lord. I still get eggs every morning. I've been sharing eggs with neighbors, uh, the same neighbors that I've given gospel tracts to. I've given Brother JT's um, How to Be Saved and Know It booklets to all the neighbors, praise the Lord. The neighbors that'll talk to me, that is. There's some neighbors that still don't even talk that's up this road. Don't, they don't talk to anybody, so it's not just just me as a Christian. So it's not just me as a Christian. It's just 
they don't like talking to anybody. So right now I gotta, there's a big shed over there that I'm gonna organize and get organized. I, and my health is, praise the Lord, he's still, I'm out of breath now. He's still got me going, but I'm just, I had a very tough year this year about my health, so please pray for me, brothers and sisters in Christ. I still got to weed eat the whole hillside or pay someone to do it if I just cannot physically get down there and do it, because I've got to keep the path down to my cistern clear. And it's lately, remember I used to talk about in the past, brothers and sisters in Christ, where I used to, I said, it was a good system. I'd work for 30 minutes hardcore, and then I'd have to go set for 30 minutes. Talk, listen to the Bible being read, talk with the Lord, then I'd have to go to work for 30 minutes, and then back and forth, back and forth, until it got to the heat of the day, and then we just went and did Bible studies and did some stuff inside. Um, so, it's just, my health has just been really hard this year. Um, so I'm still going with it. Um, I did some volunteer work for the Fishermen's Association to uh, get to go see baby salmon, baby steelhead, to learn the areas of where you can fish, how to fish, um, and what type of fish you go after and everything. So that's why I volunteered for that stuff to try to learn. So I'm learning how to fish in the ocean, uh, kayak fishing, um, to do rock fish and learn to live off fish and rice. Um, so I'm sorry for the shaking again, brothers, sisters of Christ. I know some of the brethren out there have, get, get car sickness when they start sh shaking. So I apologize. Maybe if I do this, something to lean against. But, um, but brother and sister of Christ, um, just get to know the area that you're in. I just hopefully this is encouraging to show some of the brethren, you know, how far things have gotten. And it's, it's great having a garden, eating your own food. I remember when I first did the video and I showed it to everybody where it's like eating a salad that everything came from your own garden, the whole salad. Um, fish. I think that meal I had salad and fish and the only thing that I bought was the rice. But uh, there's times I do steamed vegetables and fish where the only thing that I bought was rice. Okay, um, I'm trying to look into making some my own bread, but uh, trying to find the right grains around here that's not store-bought, but you can get, I, the farmer's market here doesn't have any grains or whole wheat or something like that where I can try to make my own bread with uh, natural stuff that hasn't been messed with. But brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord will give you some something to, to keep you busy. Okay, sisters in Christ, crocheting, making clothes, fixing clothes, I've got knitted uh, quilts in the house. I've got knitted that are handmade. I've got some um, scarves that were made to me by family members that were handmade. Um, they're really nice. Okay, when they're handmade, um, there's just a lot of things you can be doing, brothers and sisters in Christ, to keep busy, to keep, you know, have good addictions, keep you away from sin, uh, to keep you from being too distracted by this world and what's going on in this world. I'll let the car go by. But uh, uh, the Lord has blessed me. So I praise the Lord for that. And I thank the brethren for their prayers. So um, just continue to pray for me. And I continue to pray for you that God will bless you guys and keep you guys busy and good things, doing good work with your hands. Remember, we're supposed to be patiently waiting, patiently waiting for that uh, glorious liberty, right? the catching away of the body of Christ. And, so then we're supposed to abound in the work of the Lord. Doing something like what I just showed you guys. Talking to the Lord, praying to the Lord, and thanking the Lord for the healthy food that that provides. Um, it's doing the work of the Lord. It's abounding in the work of the Lord. Okay, And uh, the Lord will bless your hands. And keep them in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. And I uh, just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.